Hi, my name is Natalie Nahai. I am the author of Webs of Influence, The Psychology of Online Behaviour, and I also host The Hive podcast. I help businesses to understand the psychology behind consumer behaviour and how to apply behavioural and psychological insights online and also more broadly to help create more engaging customer experiences. I've had the pleasure of working with the CSA for a while now, and so it's a delight to join in this conversation. And I'm currently writing a new book exploring the consumer brand relationship as it evolves and also what brands can do right now and in the future to become more resilient. So today I wanted to focus on how we might use some of these insights to develop strategies for the future. And in my research, there are five key things that I found about changing behaviours that are really vital for brands to understand right now if we're to successfully navigate this crisis. The first two insights come from Ernst & Young's Future Consumer Index, How COVID is Changing Consumer Behaviours. It was conducted on the 6th of April 2020, and they served the, surveyed nearly 5,000 consumers across the US, Canada and the UK, as well as France and Germany, giving them online questionnaires that looked at sentiment and intent. Crucially, they found that a third of consumers strongly agree with the suggestion that they will reappraise the things they value most and not take certain things for granted now and as we come out of the crisis. They also found that over a quarter said they would pay more attention to what they consume and what impact it has. Insights three and four came from the 2020 Edelman Trust Barometer, a special looking at the coronavirus. It was a 10 market online survey looking at 10,000 respondents in which 90% of people agreed that brands should do everything they can to protect the well-being and financial security, both of their employees and their suppliers, even if it meant suffering a big financial loss during the pandemic period. And 71% of people surveyed said that if they see brands and companies placing profits before people in this crisis, those brands would lose their trust forever. That's a pretty big statement to make. And finally, the fifth insight is taken from Kantar's COVID-19 barometer. They looked at over 30,000 people's opinions in over 50 markets, and they looked at generational differences and found that millennials, people aged 24 to 30, 25 to 34, and Gen Z aged 18 to 24, actually hold brands to higher account. And that compared to other generations, these groups have a higher expectations that brands should engage in more proactive ways with society and its citizens. So that's a little bit of context setting. But what can you do as a business to boost your resilience now and as we emerge into the next chapter? Well, there are three things that I think are really crucial for brands to take focus on. The first is looking at how we can drive responsible business performance. So this means being able to take responsibility to assess and accept any changes where necessary. And if that means taking some hits in the process in order to support employees and customers, then making that call in a way that is timely and efficient. It also means finding ways to understand and address cons consumers' evolving needs, and also figuring out what you're actually willing to sacrifice to uphold your values. The second thing I think brands can do is to engage in emotionally intelligent communication. This means being clear, being truthful, and being responsive as the need arises. So how are you adapting your tone, building trust, and conveying genuine authenticity during a time in which customers are expecting greater transparency from their businesses? When you look at authenticity, and if we define this as representing your context, your values, and your actions in a truthful way, research suggests that it can improve the receptivity of your message, it can also enhance the perceived quality of your brand, its products and services, and it can also increase purchase intention. So being sensitive, responsive, and appropriate in the context while upholding authentic values is going to be really important. The third things that brands have to be able to do is avoid virtue signaling and instead focus on purpose and expressing real values in a coherent way. So virtue signaling is when a brand conspicuously expresses its values, usually through a marketing campaign, without actually taking actions to live by them. So here I would suggest thinking about how you can identify and communicate your values in a way that allows your personality's brand and uh, voice to shine 
while focusing not only on your brand's goals, but also what customers need, what's in it for them. If you can be consistent and coherent in the way that you internally work, so how you express your values, looking after employees and supply chains, and then transmit that through your communication, people will sense the integrity. An example of brands doing this badly, a lot of people have talked about the early campaigns conducted by McDonald's and Volkswagen, where they used the social distancing approach to change their logos, but then there were all sorts of issues in the press about how employees were being treated. Good examples would include, for instance, the US brand Patagonia, who closed their stores and online shops in order to protect staff while still paying them full wage. So there are different ways in which you can both talk the talk and walk the walk. So I'd like to leave you with this thought. Amidst the suffering and uncertainty of this crisis, there is also a real opportunity for deep transformation and for creating a more resilient world, not only now and through this crisis, but in the ones that we may face in the future. And because we all seek greater depth and meaning and purpose in our lives, I'd like to ask you, what if you grasped this moment and worked with your business to help drive some of this positive change? Thank you.